until I get in my wheelchair. I'm basically at the mercy of other people. In the morning, I wait for my attendant, Maurice. He comes and he helps get me up. And he basically does everything. He gets me in the sho shower and puts me in my shower chair. And then he takes me out and basically he does every day until, until I get in my wheelchair. A wheelchair, not just a wheelchair, it's part of me. I'm grateful that I can still open the fridge and get cups. And that I can also like turn on the faucet and pick up things off my dresser and then I can still hold my dogs. It gives me a break so I can take care of Morgan in the best possible way that she needs. It's because she needs me, um, but as far as independence goes, once she's in this chair, I've got a break. She's got a break for me too because, you know, she, she doesn't want anybody to know she needs help. She wants to get in her wheels and be a typical 13-year-old kid with her friends and go, and she does. When you're a, a, somebody who has a disability, you're you're facing a lot of challenges in life. A customized wheelchair allows you to meet those challenges head on and allows us to live a life just like somebody who is not in a chair. My wheelchair means everything to me. I know that some people see it as a constraint, but it's really not. Otherwise, I would be in bed all day, not able to live a life and not able to do anything, but because of the wheelchair and everything that comes with it, it means a lot. So my life, me. Nothing compared to what it is now without my chair. If I didn't have this chair, my life would not be the same because I use this for everything. I use it for school and home, and I feel normal when I'm in this chair. Without this chair, I would not be a productive member of society. I would not be able to hold a job. What's so important for these patients is a sense of independence, of participation, of being part of their family life and their community. Getting out with their mobility system in their wheelchair in spite of their adversity and difficulties is really paramount to their overall health. Psychologically, uh, emotionally, to be part of what they see going on around them is key and to do that in a less than ideal way really short changes their opportunity to participate fully. I'm a quadriplegic. If you took me and put me into a manual chair that wasn't fitted for me, I would break down in moments. It would have a devastating impact on my ability to be active in the community and to represent this community. Whereas with the right piece of equipment, I've been active, travel, work, active part of my community, active part of society for 18 years without complication. It's like night and day if you're like in a hospital chair to this chair. You can really do more harm than good by going to that shelf and putting your loved one in one of those off-the-shelf chairs because this is where they live. These are their legs. This is how they live their lives and as we all know quality of life is the most important thing. An important thing to remember is that the patients who need this kind of technology really constitute a fairly small proportion of the patients who need assistance with mobility and wheelchairs in general. These are not off-the-shelf, run-of-the-mill wheelchairs. These are highly specialized, custom-designed wheelchairs for a very small percentage of patients whose needs can't be met by routine equipment. My chair impacts my health because when I stand, it makes my back not curve anymore and it stretches my hips so I don't have to have hip surgery or go back into the hospital. Everything with this chair is very customized to us in our needs, in our disabilities, and help, helping us be more functional. Jeff and I obviously are different sizes, but yet our chairs fit us like a glove. The difference between my chair and a hospital chair is that mine is lightweight. The chair itself is about 18 pounds, 
where a typical hospital chair is about 45, 50, even an upwards of 60 pounds. The wheels are lightweight, the, the chair is lightweight. Because I'm in this chair 16 to 18 hours a day, I have to be able to propel this chair for that long of a period of time. So the lighter it is, the easier it is for me to propel. Arms are not made like legs. They're not as strong as legs. And we're asking our arms to do things that they were never ever meant to do. As I was growing, um, my scoliosis started to get a little bit worse and I had to go from um, a typical chair to a custom chair because I was starting to get pressure sores as I was sitting. Those are really, really hard to heal, so um, it was completely necessary. My customized chair broke, so I had to go on with another chair that was not customized for myself, which caused me to have pressure sores, which put me in the hospital for 19 days, which cost uh, $150,000. And now I'm going to therapy, which is $1,000 a day. It's such shame with the preventative stuff that's out there. An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, but in the case of seating systems, to prevent significant problems like contractures and scoliosis and sores, uh, breakdown, what you're preventing are potentially prolonged illnesses, hospitalizations, operations, corrective procedures, months and sometimes years of cost and pain and expense to these patients and the system as a whole that could be avoided if the seating system were properly fitted in the first place. They literally went through every measurement of her body from her chest to her back to her butt to her legs to her thighs to her arms even measuring around her head just to get that proper fit for every part of Morgan's body from this headrest to you know you don't really realize that even just if your neck's not in the right spot that your neck's going to get stiff. So they wanted to make sure that when Morgan was in this chair she was as most comfortable as she would be because she lives in this chair. There are a number of elements in these complicated wheelchairs that are really important, not just to the comfort of the patient, but to the overall health. Specifically, for example, the tilt, recline, and leg lift features are key to varying the position of the patient for comfort, but also to take pressure off, to increase circulation and depth of breathing. Since I've sat in a chair, I'm now able to straighten my legs a lot more and even my lung capacity has gotten better because I've been going around campus in my wheelchair and going outside and so I haven't been sick as much. The team approach, the seating specialist, the therapist, the doctor involved ensure that every element is in fact medically necessary. The condition the patient is in today is not necessarily the condition they'll be in down the road and they have to understand how to make that wheelchair most adaptable, most appropriate for the whole course of the patient's illness. There aren't a bunch of superfluous, unnecessary options like designing an expensive Cadillac just because you like how it looks and feels. These are elements that are designed specifically for each patient and every element is medically necessary. When policymakers make these policies, that don't recognize complex rehab technology as being a medical device that has to be customized for the end user. Their policies and what we can do and what we're willing to do just don't align. What people have to understand is that the right wheelchair, getting the right piece of equipment under the individual, is a good thing for society to invest in. Um, it's a good thing for the Medicare, Medicaid program to invest in. It's a good thing for a third party payer to invest in. Because with the right piece of equipment, with somebody who's got a piece of equipment that they've been trained on and that allows them to get out into their community. It opens up tremendous amounts of discretionary income that they can spend now. It reduces costs for long-term care. And it's just a more dignified way that we should be treating American citizens. So as a mother's standpoint, I thought my daughter deserved the most comfortable quality for the rest of her days on this earth. This is where she lives, and I was not going to torture my daughter and let her sit in one position for the rest of her days. If we drive out competition, if it comes to the point that we don't have multiple options or the clinician doesn't have multiple options about what's the most appropriate piece of equipment to put under an individual, and it simply becomes, we want to supply a wheelchair that has four wheels and our tilt and recline system, what's the best you can do for $2,500? That's going to come at the expense of the individuals. Having a wheelchair isn't a luxury, it's a necessity. and. Being able to get around yourself is not a luxury, it's a necessity. We're taking people and what we're doing is we're locking them away and, and pushing away people with disabilities as though they don't have rights. 
the ADA says that we have rights. Um, and all we're looking for is a piece of equipment that lets us exercise them. To wrap up, I'm very thankful for my wheelchair and for those who think wheelchair is just a wheelchair. I'm here to tell you that it's not. There are so many things that I'm able to do that I think my wheelchair provider for and all the people out there that help me get custom CD. They just help my life so much.